pals. I have a first class ticket on the Struggle Express today. That is a high speed bullet train to Struggle Town. But we're just going to go with it. It took me five tries to put my hair in a bun and I gave up. Just, it's been a whole, it's been a whole day. Today, instead of doing all of the other things that I have been doing or could be doing, I'm going to open my mail. <laughs> I know you love that. If you've been around more than about two weeks, you know that opening my mail on camera was all I did on my channel and I loved it. And while I want to do a lot of other things as well on this channel, I'm still going to do this. So cheers to bad coffee and opening my snail mail. So a while back, I kind of scrubbed my P.O. box address from the internet because I got really overwhelmed by the mail I was receiving because I felt like if I wasn't able to write back, people would be mad at me. And for the most part, no one's been mad at me, except for that one guy whose post-crossing postcard got lost in the shuffle in 2020 and was very angry, but it's fine. I'm not currently post-crossing, so I don't have to worry about it. But what I did was I went through the stash of mail that I've received between like 2020 and now and pulled out mostly postcards, but pulled out a bunch of things that made me smile as I was looking at them. So I thought I would read them to you. It's a great cross section of people who have been writing me for years, like since 2018, a lot of them and have continued to write me even when I don't write back and I'm a struggle bus. So I'm gonna read you some of these. And then I also have this month's olfactive I always think it's a V, but it's an F olfactive subscription. That's a perfume sample subscription. So I will open that as well as part of this because it's my mail. It's snail mail and it's a great Venn diagram of things I'm enjoying right now. <laughs> so I have this incredible vintage postcard that was sent to me from Trooper, who is a Trooper. <laughs> it says, whenever I come across a vintage card, I say a thank you to the snail mail superstar. Appreciate you sharing this passion with the world. This one was from November 2020, and it feels good to be back sharing one of these passions with the world. I got this one from Betsy, who I adore. Too glam to give a damn. Truly. It says, Sarah, I can't remember if I sent you one of these or not. You do some fierce makeup looks, so I thought you needed one. Cheers. Speaking of makeup, would you watch a makeup bathroom tour? Because down here in my basement of wonders. I have a little bathroom that is my bathroom. No one else uses it for the most part. And it has all my makeup stuff and it's decorated in a very me style. And if you'd like to see it, comment. If not, that's cool too, but I might do a little tour. This is a classic Constellation Co card. And am I mad that people send me my own cards? No, no, because I need these words as much as other people do. You don't have to be able to explain it. I don't have to totally understand. I'm still here for you. This is from Jim. Love you, Jim. It says, things have been rough lately. Then by all means, do what you need to do in order to get well. We all love you. Sending prayers your way. Just so kind. This was sent right after I announced my sabbatical in the fall. And I can't tell you how much everyone's support has meant to me. Because it was so scary to make that announcement and change things. And um, really appreciate it. All right, this one is not currently signed and it got separated from its other card, so I apologize to whoever sent this, but it says, Sarah, enjoy sabbatical, you deserve it. If card club goes on, great. If it doesn't, you need to know how much we love you and sincerely appreciate what you sacrificed to give us the joy of snail mail. Hug your family and make sure they understand we are grateful for the time and effort you give up. That's so kind, thank you. All right, I have one here from Corey. It says, hello, I hope this letter finds you well, Snail Mail Superstar. Look how cool this, like, metallic, reflective stationery is. That is incredible. How are you feeling about the purple hair choice you made? <laughs> great question, and I grabbed this one because it had a question I could answer. And I feel great about it. I enjoyed the heck out of it. It is still hanging on, like, the tiniest bit there at the ends. However, my hair is very angry about being bleached and I can't imagine wanting to bleach it again because of all the breakage and the sadness, but 
I enjoyed it. It was a good, it was a good twice. And I'm glad that I'm done with it. <laughs> It says, I am happy to see you sur survived the ludicrous heat wave we experienced and babysitting eight children. Oh my gosh. Yeah, y'all. Last summer was crazy. I agreed to babysit for three different families and hosted them all in my backyard on a day when it got to 101 degrees. And the children ate 50 popsicles in one day. And it was wild. It says, I went out one day last weekend and it was 119. Seriously? On that note, we finally finally made the uh commitment and the investment we never thought we'd make and we got air conditioning so this summer i don't have to sleep in the basement because upstairs is too hot and it's too hot in the basement to sleep so honestly i'm very excited it says i love your instagram and your work i hope you're doing well i imagine you're in your garden today regards Corey. love that just came in from the garden a minute ago happy 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 love this card little chickadee best just the best i have a chickadee that hangs out with me on my deck every time i go out there i swear he's always there his name is chickadee charles and he's my friend and i'm getting a chickadee tattoo so this card was beloved when it arrived i really like this one this is this is a good one this is from 2021 it says i'm not sure how to start this so here goes nothing hi sarah snail mail superstar i saw you're going to be on a sabbatical and I wanted to send you some warm fuzzies, good vibes for what is hopefully a rewarding and restful time for you. I was in a bit of a reading rut and feeling terribly lonely when I finally sat down with my copy of your book. My book is called The Year I Became Snail Mail Superstar. There is a bookshelf above me. I noticed in my last video I was like reaching into the sky and pulling things out. It looks like this. All the copies are sold out but there is a digital copy and if you don't have a paper copy and you would like one, let me know. I might be able to arrange that. So you know what to do in the comments. It says, it was really great timing that I read it when I did. It helped me feel seen and less alone, which is everything I wanted when I wrote my book. So thank you for telling me that. Like you, I'm an older sibling in a large age gap, which was cool to read about and how close you both are. Love my sister. Besides your book, your cards have helped me with some projects. For one project, I had the kindergartners in the classroom I was teacher's assistant in each decorate a birthday card and write their names in the card I ordered from your shop to give to the main lead teacher for her birthday. I love that. More recently, I discovered your things have been rough lately card through your blog. To say that would be an understatement of epic proportions. So I ordered a set of six for my closest friends to send to thank them for their support. It made me smile to find the sticker, Cozy Winter, you included with the package and your kind note as well. This is all to say your kindness and hard work you're putting out into the world make a difference, and I admire you for that. I've caught a few episodes of your podcast and respect your sincerity and compassion for yourself, your friends and family, and people like me who just really like your cards. Wishing you well as this year winds down and into the future, whatever it holds for you and your family. All the best, Natalie. P.S. It's awesome you had the MLS Cup trophies at your store. Go Sounders. <laughs> Definitely a kindred spirit. All right. I have a, another several postcards, but first we're going to do this. So this subscription, this is only the second month I've received it, but I am very excited about it. It comes out in a, in a theme every month. This theme for April 2020 is Awaken Till Slumber. It says, have you ever worn a fragrance before you went to sleep? Ooh, I do that. I do that. <laughs> How about a scented refresh mid-afternoon after lunch, but before the sun begins to set? We typically apply scent to skin with our morning routine of getting ready to take on the day. But what if we broke it down to morning, afternoon, night? Here's your chance to change it up, layer from one to the other, and seamlessly transition as your day carries on with three fragrances that effortlessly complement each other. Oh, that's fun. I definitely spray things throughout the day. Like every perfume has a, you know, an amount of time that it lasts for. Typically more expensive perfumes last a little longer due to like the ingredients, the way they're put together. Um, but I just, I really enjoy scents that complement each other and that I can refresh throughout the day. So this is super fun. And the three that are in here are Magnolia Bliss from Juliet Has a Gun. 
Fox in the Flower Bed from Imaginary Authors and Noir Patchouli by Histoires des Parfums. So that's super fun. Within the inner package, they send this beautiful little box. I already have one up on my shelf because I like decorative boxes. A little card and then the three samples. And I really like these. They send... Um, little sample cards that you can spray and make notes on that give you like the story and the key notes and everything which I really enjoy but I do like to smell and then read that is my preferred method all right we've got magnolia bliss ooh 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 I like that I'm always nervous about florals because there are some flowers like lilies that I really don't like the smell of, like really don't. But magnolias, I have been noticing because if you if you look right here, oh, right here, nope, nope, oh, oh, where's my finger? <laughs> there, you look there. There's a magnolia blossom and I painted that based on the magnolia tree that we have up on our deck. It's like a little baby tree, but it is in full bloom right now. These beautiful, rich, red, purple blooms. And we picked that out as a memorial tree for my father-in-law who passed away in February. And the, the blooms on it smell incredible. It says refreshingly floral. It has magnolia, musk, ambroxan, freesia, peony, and peach. Ooh, the peach, yes, definitely feel that. Like a nice springy, summery, that peach is nice. Refreshingly floral, magnolia bliss is playful, feminine, and vibrant. Inspired by the flower power movement of the 70s, this piece in a bottle fragrance showcases the bold blossoms of the magnolia tree. The bliss of the fragrance is its ability to make you smile as you fling your hair back <laughs> and shimmer into the beauty of the sun season. Summer stone fruits shine through a myriad of florals of the ombre, ombre colored bottle where ambroxan and musk develop on the skin with time. Yeah, that's super fun. That's a very summery, summery scent. And I'm enjoying getting to know some summery scents because I started my perfume journey in the winter and was really enjoying like some like sweet, more like coffee scents, like things that had some like mm, warm and coziness to them. And in the spring, I've been enjoying things that are a little bit more like a little brighter, a little more like green and fresh and woody, but I'm enjoying also kind of thinking about what kind of scents I want for summer. So this is a nice one. I like that. All right, the next one, Fox in the Flower Bed. Great name. Oh, oh. Oh no. Oh no, I hate that. <laughs> like, I hate that. <laughs> it's terrible. That is not for me. Oh gosh, okay, it's making my nose run. I like getting samples. I really do. And reading about what's in them and learning like what is not for me. And like, ooh. What this smells like to me is like the fox took a hot, steamy pee pee in the flower bed. Oh my. Oh, it says jasmine, tulip, alpine air, honey, and thistle. trying to be dramatic. I swear I really hate this. Oh god. So this, his, this fragrance shines a light on lush jasmine but in a way that you're smelling the aroma of the jasmine as it floats above its petals in the open alpine air. Pink pepper corn gives a tad of spice that is sweetened slightly by the honey note. Powdery soapiness keeps it clean while it stays cool, light, fresh, whimsical with a, just a hint of greenness. I have absolutely no idea what in here I don't, I don't know. I apologize, imaginary authors. I'm sure you have plenty of things that are delightful and I'm sure someone else would really enjoy that. But that for me, just, I don't, ugh, I, I could live without smelling that again. No boy, that makes me nervous to smell the next one. Thanks. Okay. I'm gonna smell this one again. Thank you, Magnolia, save me. 
I don't throw away samples even if I really hate them. I have like a little wooden box I keep them in. This one might have to be quarantined. Um, but I keep them because I would like to be sharing them with my friends. So I have a girls weekend coming up. I'm going to bring them all, let my, my gal pals let, smell them and see if there's anything they really like um, so that they would know what they would want to buy maybe because not everybody wants to collect dozens of samples. Like, moi. All right, so this one is Noir Patchouli. Oh God, I can smell it from here. There are scents that have patchouli in them that I enjoy. And there are scents that have patchouli in them that make me want to jump out of my skin. And oh God, oh no. See, last month in the, what do you call it? Olfactive subscription, I liked all three. Like they were all nice and I like them all and I know I'm not gonna like every month and all of them and that's okay and that's what for me perfume is is like an experimental fun get to try things learn about myself what I like what I don't like what makes up those things no that's very strong that's very very strong this one says a crimson rose rose is not my favorite we're starting out strong sits on top of sensuous leathered patchouli yep Truly opens up the gates to this dark, sultry, and oh so spiced fragrance. It says, warning, don't evaluate this solely based on your scent card. It has to be worn on the skin to fully appreciate. Yeah, but if I hate it on the scent card, it's hard for me to want to put it on my skin and live with it. Like, I just, I don't like that. I don't like the rose. The way that rose comes out um, in this is not for me. The, the r -r 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 rose from Alice Brooklyn is the first rose scent that I've liked and have worn and enjoyed. That one has a different vibe completely. This feels like, what is that song about how roses smell bad? The ro rose note falls into the background quickly as an ambery patchouli emerges with soapy musk, giving it a skin-soaked vintage vibe. Vintage I get. I'm, I'm feeling like you walked into a vintage store and there was like a cute bottle of something and you sprayed it and then you were like, oh God, no. That's what I'm feeling like. The leather note softens with wear as a dusty coriander floats in and out. See, this is this is it for me. Soapy, don't love soapy. Don't love that descriptor. Don't love the smells that have soapy. And then things like vintage, dusty. None of that is something I want to smell like. Again, everyone's scent and experience of scent is so different, so different. But for the love of all things holy, I would like to yeet those last two into the sun and never smell them again. And in fact, they're on my hands a little and that's going to really bug me. But Magnolia Bliss, quite lovely. 10 out of 10. I don't know about 10 out of 10. Not a 10 out of 10, but I do really like that. I will use the sample. Let's put it that way. There's a scale of, I'm putting this bottle on my wish list and a scale of, I will use the sample in a scale of get it away from me. That's kind of the three extremes. And this one is a, I'll use the sample. So there you have it. That was this month's olfactive. Now let's read some more postcards so I can stop thinking about those scents. Boy, I literally threw the cards into the trash can. <laughs> Not for me. Okay. I love this postcard with these like flowery rain gear. So good. This is from Akasha. It's from last spring. <laughs> Greetings, Sarah. Spring is beginning to show itself at long last and I'm very ready for it. Stay well and stay hopeful. Akasha. Love that. That is a keeper of a postcard. This one, I really, it's one of my old like voting postcards from election season way back when. And it's from Jim. I know another from Jim, but Jim tends to send me like the most enjoyable cards and postcards. And this is a memory that while I don't enjoy, I feel like it should be remembered. And that's Jim and that's me in my empty store when I was selling the last of the furniture and fixtures and he was coming to buy a few things. And I was like, oh, 2020 was a wild time. <laughs> anyway, so I liked that memory. This one is a beautiful, like naturalist, botanical kind of card. Love that. This one is from Jeff. 
It says, Sarah, I thought this poem was beautiful. It's helped me over the last months. And it's a poem from Mary Oliver. I love Mary Oliver. I have several of her poetry collections in my library and like my home library, not the one down the street. And I thought I'd read it to you because love it. Don't hesitate. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give into it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind, and much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. Love, Mary Oliver. I just love this bearded gentleman. He's fantastic. This one is from Frank, the postcardist himself. It says, hi, Sarah. Since hope you feel better seems a bit weak, I'm going with smiles as a cure for everything. I don't know if it works, but smiles and grimaces look similar, so you can fake it till you make it. Some nerve that nerve has on you. Hope you feel better. See what I did there, Frank. And this one is from all the way back in March of 2020, when I was just really, now I understand what was happening, but I was just beginning to see how my body was reacting to burnout, except I didn't listen for like two two years. <laughs> Um, but I started having this like insane neck pain and I was getting numbness in my thumb. And so I had like nerve issues that were going from my neck all the way down my arm. I was in physical therapy for a long time. I had to quit working for a few months, trying to work through it. And then instead of taking it easy, I went back to work intensely and then had, you know, just a, just a breakdown. It's fine. And my neck kept acting up for those two years because my body was donezo and I wasn't listening to it. So uh, that was a good reminder of that, like my burnout really did start in like 2018. And then in 2020, I tried to address it and didn't. And then in 2022, here we are, we dealing with it. So <laughs> postcard here from my friend Jacob it says hi Sarah what a fucking year it's been more questions than there can ever be answers I know never forget though you can smile and love yourself every day is a chance for us to love ourselves I thought that was a really good reminder all right this says do your part stay six feet apart in 30 days more or less it's definitely been more. This one's from David. And David has been one of the people that just keeps writing to me. Like, I, there's a lot of you. But David is one of those people. I, I just went to my P.O. box recently and there was a postcard from him. And I was like, thank you, David. So oh, thank you. This one says, Sarah, good on you for taking the sabbatical. I'm rooting for you, Dave. And then in the back here, let's see if I can cover up everything. There's a Bugs Bunny stamp and it says bugs is off too <laughs> which i love yay all right i got two more here this one is a great little saint baldrick's postcard and it's from justin and it says every year since 2003 i have shaved my head for saint baldrick's foundation saint baldrick's raises money for childhood cancer research through head shaving events and I think that's really cool, like super cool. So there's a link on this and I'm going to put it in the description box. So if you would like to join and donate or shave your head, I just think that this is really cool. And this is not a recent postcard, I don't believe. Although there's not a postmark on it because the USPS is, they, they're doing their thing. And anyways, I just thought that, that was a cool one. Thank you for sharing that with me, Justin. And then we have a lighthouse postcard, which you've, if you've been around a while, you know these are my favorite ones. I don't care if they're tacky. I don't care if they're awesome. I love a lighthouse and I love a lighthouse postcard. It says, hi, Sarah, hope you are doing well. Life continues to be unpredictable. <laughs> so true. 
I try to continue to look for the light and hope through difficult and hope though difficult. I think about you often. I love the earrings you're wearing. Oh no, I forgot to wear earrings today. I love funky jewelry. Cheers, Betsy. I really do need to remember to put on earrings. Today I was running around all over the place and wearing masks. So it's annoying to have like dangling earrings. But when I'm either outside or home, I often have been wearing like big giant ridiculous earrings. My husband got a 3D printer for Christmas and has been 3D printing me fun earrings like seashells and hummingbirds and octopuses and feathers and like all kinds of fun things. And I just love them. I just love them. I can be like, hey, I need this kind of earring. And he's like, I'm on it. Love it. So good. So that's the mail that I have for you today. I hope that it was a fun surprise to be back on the snail mail train here. I will put my PO box in the description box. I'm not gonna include it in every video, but when I open mail, I will do one. And as long as you remember that I make no, <laughs> I make no promises about sending mail back. I do occasionally, and I hope to be able to do that more often. Uh, but as long as you know, and are okay with me not sending mail back all the time, every time, then you're welcome to write to me and maybe see your postcard on the channel. So I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one. It's fine. So today, instead of doing, my nose is so itchy, why is it so itchy? All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's just fun. I always try to make my husband smell things and he's like, that smells good. That smells nice. I'm like, more detail, please. <laughs>